So we're giving you both sides of what, what debt does, but we're also giving you the good news of what God's word says about you. What, whatever the world does, God still has a plan for you. He wants to bless you more than you want to be yeah, blessed. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to A Father's Heart with Dr. Phil Godot. Dr. Brenda Godot. We are a family-friendly church that teaches the Word of God so you can live an effective Christ-centered life. This is where the Word works when you work the Word. Now for today's message. We've been teaching a series here, 1 Samuel 17 chapter. We've been teaching a series here for a little bit on the area concerning the area of uh, debt elimination or supernatural debt cancellation. Now, the, the issue is and why we're teaching on it and why we stand on it, because there's, we need deliverance. Amen. And I just try that one more time. We need deliverance. Yes. I know, I know y'all don't feel like it right now, but you, you do. And so we've been teaching on how to get about the importance of understanding the spirit of debt and that debt is not your friend and debt is working not for you, it's working against you. And that we understand that the system, there is a culture of debt that of we have been raised under to make it think that we don't, we can make it with just this spirit and operation under this spirit of debt. So I've been teaching on that and how to be able to deal with it. You know, I was just thinking about how someone said, well, you know, when are you going to finish up with this series on debt? When you get delivered. <laughs> somebody said, well, how long is that going to take? I don't know, until you get delivered. Amen. But the issue is, is that I was thinking about a, a pastor. There was a pastor that he was a new pastor in the church. And, uh, and, and they, they, people were all excited about this pastor. And, oh, man, everybody was talking about him. They had, and they packed the church out on that Sunday morning. And he ministered a fiery message. And then all of a sudden, they came back Sunday night. And he ministered the same message again. And then they came back that sun next Sunday, and he ministered the same message again, ministered the next Sunday night, ministered the same message for about three months. And then they went to the, called the deacon board and said, something the matter with him, he only know one message. He only know one message. And then they, they called him in and said, Pastor, is the, the people complaining because you're only teaching one message. Do you know any more? He said, sure, I know a lot of messages, but why should I teach them something different until they do the first one? See, sometimes we want to move on to something else until we get our deliverance. And faith cometh by, and hearing by, and the more I hear, the more the Word is going to be able to saturate me because it's the Word of God that's going to be your deliverance. And you've got to hear it, and it doesn't come. Deliverance does not come automatically at a time. Sometimes deliverance is a process. And so we got to hear it to get faith enough for it that we can start operating in it in Jesus' name. Good morning. I'm excited about being here in the house of the Lord today. Amen. And what do we come to church for? We come to hear the good news. The good news of the gospel so we can just get built up and understand what God wants to speak to us because there is a difference between good and evil. Yep, yep, it sure is. And uh, the word of God it gives a, a distinct difference and, it, and we're here to help you uh, deliver you from any thoughts where the enemy can get a hold of you in the area of any evil that uh, the enemy would like to uh, keep you entrapped in. So as we're talking about getting out of debt, getting free from it, we want to give you the good news and so that you will not fall in the trap of the enemy. And debt is evil. Now, now, watch out. Now, be real careful about that. Okay? Oh, you don't want me to say it? Well, you know, people get real sensitive about that kind of stuff, you know. Okay. When you start talking, debt is evil because most people in debt. Well, you're right, but, but we're teaching them so that they can understand why we keep teaching it because it's not a good thing. No. We, but, but, and the reason why it's not a good thing is because it robs people of their faith and it makes them dependent upon uh, upon the system than it does upon God. The Bible says no man can serve two masters. You'll either love the one and hate the other one, cleave to the one, 
or you will despise the other one. You can't serve God and the banking system. So the enemy works real hard to rob you of your faith and your dependency upon God, and that's why it's evil, and also to rob you of the blessings that God has for you. How many of y'all know God's got more for you than what you're experiencing right now? Say, somebody say, absolutely. 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 He got way more than what you're experiencing right now. But see, when I will trust more in my FICO score than I will in God's ability to answer my prayer or to manifest his miracle work and power on my behalf, I'm robbing God of his ability to bless me the way he wants to. And that's why it is evil. Right. So you said it real nice for us. Okay, then, that's what I try to do because you, you you're pretty hard. No. <laughs> But I need to explain what uh, Concordance, Strong's Concordance says about evil. Well, won't you just do that? Evil. Okay. Uh, evil means something that is bad. Okay. Unpleasant. Unpleasant. Giving pain. Mm. And misery. Mm. See, and unhappiness. Unhappiness. Yes. Right. And, and misery. Mm -hmm. And when you're getting into debt, at the time, it doesn't feel like it's, you're going to be unhappy. You get very excited. You get uh, just, just out of control because all of a sudden you can just get so many things without paying anything. That's the way it kind of gets whispered to you. Can you kind of get whisked into it because of the way it comes to you. And God has another way. There's good and there's evil. God has a good plan for your life. So what happens is, is that when it says it's bad or unpleasant, uh, giving pain or unhappy, ha unhappiness or misery. You know, I know this is not a pleasant uh, thing that I'm going to say, but, you know, it, it just still needs to be addressed. And when we deal with, with Robert Williams, uh, the, the uh, comedian who just committed suicide, right. that is a tragedy. Right. You know, he was just two years younger than me, and I'm very young. Yes. Yes. Amen. And, um, and, and when you deal with the area of that, how that, uh, he could get overwhelmed when he, listen to me, because some people think if I can just get more money, I'd be happy. Or if I could just get me a bigger house, if I could just get me a bigger car, if I could get me some new clothes or something along that line. See, Robert Williams had everything. He had more than you could ever think about right now. He had it all, but see, somewhere the door got open. A crack happened, and the enemy was able to get in there and oppress him and, and bring unpleasant thoughts and, and rob him of his happiness. And then he, the door, he had no faith to believe that things could change. Come on, tell somebody something. I don't care how bad it is, things can change. Y'all believe that in here? I don't care how bad it is, things can change. If I have, come on, if I have what? If I have faith to believe, so, but if I'm dependent upon the system, the system is not working for me like God would work for you. So when he was dependent upon that system and things started falling apart, relationships, things, money being taken, whatever, it, he could all, it was all over with, or whatever the sickness or disease, because he, God is still a healer today. He's still a deliverer today. He's still a miracle worker today. Come on, y'all. Huh? I mean, God can do what? Anything. If I can believe, I can receive. So the devil robs people of their faith in God's ability to perform. So then oppression and depression. So debt, when, they, when you get in debt, listen to me, they target people who cannot normally pay the thing. They target you because they want you to be able to lapse on your payment, where they can charge you more interest, where they can be able to oppress you and be able to manipulate and take everything they can from you. The calls keep coming as you dread answering the phone. It's bill collectors hoping to cash in on your debt problem. The pressure of being overextended can be overwhelming on you, your family, and relationships. The seduction of debt can be devastating. But there's hope. Even if you feel like you've got it under control, you need to understand what's going on in our world for our children. They need to understand that this is not the way to go. This is not God's best. See, but what debt has done, it has canceled God out of your life. Though you love God, 
Though you go to church, God is not number one in your life. It's a hindrance. It's a distraction. And it's just of the devil. So, yeah, we all need to get out of debt. Being out of debt is one way that you can really be able to help people come to God. Within this period, I'm going to be debt free, out of debt, because I'm going to take this word and I'm going to use it. I just think I'd be able to, you know, do more and give more freely. Pick up the phone with confidence and call right now for Dr. Godot's latest groundbreaking series. It's a call you won't regret. So I think this teaching is right on time. I just trust God that everyone's taking heed to it. Learn how to break free from the weight of out of control debt. I come against every damnable and every wicked and every evil spirit that's been assigned against you to oppress you, to depress you, to rob you, to steal from you, to hold you back from your faith and relationship with God in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. So that's what we're talking about, the good news. He wants you to come and hear. We're giving you both sides of what what debt does, but we're also giving you the good news of what God's word says about you. What, whatever the world does, God still has a plan for you. He wants to bless you more than you want to be blessed. Yeah, yeah. And he says, I know the plan I have for you, and it's a good plan, and, it's, and I got a hope for you and a future for you. So if you can just come with the understanding, they may be hitting the word debt, but whatever it is, God's got a word for you. Because you, God knows where you are. Come on. When we pray, we pray for what God would have to give to the people of God. Yes. So there is something in here for you to grab a hold of, and it's the good news that God wants you blessed. And if you need to get a deliverance in certain areas, that's what you come for. I'm turning to Psalm 97 and verse 10. Turn to that real quickly because, see, we got to understand that, that listen to me, the enemy does not want you to be able to have a testimony of God delivering and miracle working power on your behalf. So he wars against your relationship with God. He wars against you from being, having God anointing and, and, and blessings to be seen in your life. So he wars against you. Look what it says here in Psalms uh, 97. And if you can uh, give it to me in the Amplified or the Message Bible, I would appreciate that like we did this morning. Uh, oh, you who love the Lord. Do we got anybody like that today? Yeah. One, two, three, seven, twenty. Okay, all right. Oh, you that love the Lord. Look what it says here. Hate evil. And, 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 and be what? Preserved? He, he preserves. Uh, it says, uh, and he preserves the lives, the lives of his what? Saints. I any saints in here today? Yeah. I declare y'all preserved today. Amen, preserved, and he says, and the children of God, he delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. And I'm calling y'all delivered out of the hand of the wicked one in Jesus' name. You know, just, just uh, yesterday, you know, I, I believe that my prayers be answered. So I pray over y'all all the time. Every morning for God's divine protection, every night, God's divine protection over you. Yesterday, my wife was, uh, we had came to the Witnessing Institute. We, because she could correct me because I said I did, and she said we did. So now I'm saying we did. We came to the Witnessing Institute. And when we came, then Brenda wanted to go and do some sh grocery shopping and do some things. So I said, I just felt in my spirit, I said, Brenda, drive my truck today. Drive my truck. Now, she's got her own car, and then we got a little, we call it a little smart car. You know that little ugly car? We got one of them little ugly cars. And I said, Brenda, drive my truck today. And so when Brenda was coming home, they were in the turn, turn and left onto the property, and our driveway, and a guy came swooping, speeding down the road, and he uh, uh, tried to pass them on the left while they were turn, making a left-hand turn. So then they had to snatch their wheel to try to get from being hit by this guy. And then he, he smashed right in the back of him, tore my truck up. In fact, from the back of the truck all the way up to the dashboard is towed up. And if Brenda would have been in either one of those other cars, then see, neither one of us would be here today right now. The reason why, because I'd have been there with my wife, hopefully. I mean, you know, the devil hates us. No, you don't understand. He hates us. You know why he hates us? Because Brenda and myself, we are deliverers. We're deliverers. 
God has called us to help deliver the body of Christ where you can come and experience what God has for you. And Jesus says, I come that you might have life. Come on, y'all, come on. He can't, I come that you might have what? Life. And have life what? Or have life to the fullness, to the overflow. So what the enemy wants to do is rob the body of Christ because the Bible says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And so if we don't have the knowledge, we perish. And therefore, we were saying, God, I love you, but why am I not getting blessed? Why is this not happening for me? Because of the lack of knowledge. So knowledge is not always pleasant. Truth is not always present. But truth and knowledge will deliver you. Amen. Push your neighbor and tell them, you need some deliverance. I can tell right now, you need some deliverance. Come on, push them. Tell them, you need some deliverance now. Amen. So look what it says here. Amen. God is a faithful God. Y'all rejoicing with me? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Lord. I mean, I'm telling you, if you see that truck, you would see that God took care of your first lady. The devil's a liar. And I thank God for listening uh, to my husband. You no, know, what Satan meant for evil, God's turning it around for my good. You no, know, but when we trust God, when we're doing what God told us to do, you know, it, it, you can't stop what God is doing. And, and I'm blessed. I, I, I'm healed. I'm whole in every area. Thanks for your continual prayers in Jesus' name. But God, but God preserves the saints. Yes, he does. I'm calling y'all preserved in Jesus' name. I'm calling you protected. I'm calling you, I'm calling you being supernatural provisions and breakthrough on your behalf in Jesus' name. Come on, y'all. Now, now, put the scripture back on the screen. What, what, what translation was I just in right now? Okay, put the message Bible up there for me. Put the message scripture. Okay, look what it says. God loves all those who hate evil. Now, see, some of y'all, when you think about evil, you're thinking about evil like adultery or murder, uh, 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 rape, uh, uh, gang violence. But, you know, evil is anything that is controlling you and hindering you from serving God and keeping him first in your life. That's evil. And God said, look what it says there, God loves all those who hate evil. I, do I got anybody in here who hate evil? I hate anything that's going to control me or separate me from God being able to be number one in my life. And so when you get into debt, debt is a controlling factor. What does it say? Proverbs uh, 22 and 7 says, he that, uh, that did you become a servant to the lender? And in other words, one time they say you become a slave to the very one you're borrowing the money from. And, it, and they control you. So a lot of people cannot go to church on Sunday. They can't serve God the way they want to. They can't give the way they want to because you are in what? Yeah. Come on, say it like you ain't scared of it. Yeah. Because you're in debt. And I'm calling you. Yeah. When am I calling you out? Yeah. Because, see, we got to come to the place of what? Hating it. Exactly I hate right. being controlled. I hate being in bondage. And a lot of people can't get delivered because they don't hate it. Uh-oh. Make it plain. Not just in debt, in, in, in the area of finances, but in sin. A lot of people are, they're uh -oh. saying a lot of people are hurting now, today. I told you to be careful I today, know. Brenda. I'm, I'm there, not, you, there you go again. Because, you know, the people don't talk about sin in churches no more. No, but, amen. <laughs> I tired of people hurting. People hurt because they don't hate evil. You keep messing with evil. <laughs> Think you're getting away with evil, and evil is not your friend, debt is not your friend, and in a lot of things that you think that you can get away with, it's just not, you're gonna hurt, you're gonna keep falling into traps, you're gonna keep having to start over again, and all those different things, because you don't hate what God hates. Hate, hate means I don't want it anymore. If it goes against what God says, it's not the best for me. So in other words, what you're saying is that until I come to the place that I hate being addicted, I, I hate being controlled, I hate being manipulated, I hate being overweight, And, uh, come on, come on. 
So what you said, I know they didn't like that last part in there, but whatever it is, but nothing changed until you start hating it or you despise it, and then it forces you to start working on yourself or doing something or to separate yourself from company or things or anything that is causing you to be bound by that situation. Does anybody understand what I'm talking about? So it got to come to the place, I don't, I don't like it, so I'm willing to do whatever I got to do. Oh, I'm willing to diet. I'm willing to work out. But I'm never working out there. Come Y'all sure getting slim on the thing. So nothing changes until you start hating it or do you despise it to the point that you don't want it in your life no more. Is that right? That's right. Is that what you're saying? That's right. You got to hate. Hate whatever it is that is controlling you. Because he said, and go back to uh, the Message Bible, I believe it was, where it says, God loves all who hate it, hate evil. Why? He, he, he loves you because you recognize what is evil. You recognize what is holding you back from serving him with a whole heart. God loves you because he's able to do the things he's always wanted to yeah, do. Yeah. That he put you on this earth to do. That he sees you doing that you could never see yourself doing. God loves all who hate evil. And look what it says. And those who love him, he keeps safe. Right. Right. See, I thank God right now for keeping my wife safe from that situation. I thank God that he keeps those safe. And I'm telling you, and I'm declaring that no weapon formed against y'all shall prosper. And every, every attack against you will be spoiled, will fail. It will not prosper against you in Jesus' name. Because he said, those who love him, he keeps safe. And look what it says, and snatches them from the grip of the wicked. I'm calling, hey, hey. You know what? I'm calling y'all, I'm calling y'all snatched out of that situation. Snatched out of that negative situation, snatched out of that bondage, snatched out of that, that, that thing that is uh, hurting you and hurting those that love you, I call you snatched out of it in Jesus' name. Because if you love God and you want to do what's right, God says, I'm going to keep you safe and I'm going to snatch you out of that situation. Now, do I got anybody in here want to be snatched out? I, I'm telling you, I'm going to raise my hand. I want to be snatched out of debt in Jesus' name. Okay, and then all one right. one part in that scripture says, and uh, those that love God, nobody in here, because if I ask anybody in here, they're going to tell me they love God. And, and I know you do, but it, it goes, when you love God, the scripture says, if you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Am well, I being mean? Well, I'm not trying to be mean. You, you, I'm, I'm it's, just, all, it's all on you today. It's, it's the, all. It's go the ahead, mama, go it's, ahead. It's the mama in it's me. It's the mama in you. It's the mama in me. All right, go ahead, mama. Because it's, it's one thing to say something out of your mouth. And we, we love you and we, are, we appreciate you coming and hearing the word, but it doesn't <laughs> profit you if you just hear it and don't do it. There you and go. Don't put it into practice. And that's how he can snatch you out of the grip. He can snatch you out. I mean, you can't do it by yourself. So you're hearing the word and the faith is being built up in you. So when you get ready to do whatever that is that was trying to grip you and hold you and put you uh, in this situation with the wicked, yeah. no, the Holy Spirit in you is going to rise up. It's going to bring back everything to your remembrance, what you have been so taught. So put Psalms, put Proverbs 16 and 3 on the screen for me, please. Be quiet? Wait, no, wait. no, no, no. I'm just trying to, okay. I, 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 I think you, you're doing a great job. I mean, you, 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 you're operating under your anointing right now. Amen. Look, look what it says here, uh, at the Amplified or the Message, those are the ones I'm looking for right now. I Amplified or the Message, it says, roll your works up on the Lord. What, what, ask your neighbor, what part of that you don't understand right now? Roll your works up on the Lord. And then it says, and commit, look what it says, commit and what? Trust them. Come on, everybody, commit and what? Trust them. Trust them wholly to him, wholly to him. He will cause your thoughts to be in agreeable to his will, and so shall you what? Hit your what? Plans be established and successful. I'm calling it done in Jesus' name. Look what it says here. He will cause your thoughts. Well, what does the enemy do? He works on your thoughts. 
He's trying to make you think it's all over with. It ain't going to work. This ain't going to happen. Nobody loves you. Uh, all the negative things. But he says, I'm going to come on, put that, put that back up on the screen. Huh? Here, roll your works up on him. Commit and trust them wholly to him. He will cause your thoughts. What is working against you from being successful? What's working against you from having a blessed marriage, from being able to be whole in every area of your life, is your thoughts are coming in. Now that you've heard the word, it's important for you to respond to it. Now you need to say yes to him. To open the door to your heart and to let Jesus Christ come in is the biggest and greatest thing that could ever happen to you. So just say this with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I open the door to my heart and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for coming into my life, for giving my sins and giving me right relationship with you. If you just did that, your life is anew. You are a new person in Christ Jesus. Call us, write us. We'd like to give you a free book, New Creation in Christ, and we'd like to be able to stay in touch with you. Write us, call us, email us, do something. Thank, congratulations on your new walk in Christ. Why did I cave into the seduction of debt? Is there any hope? And faith comes by hearing. If you don't hear it, you won't believe in the supernatural God that is able to do something supernatural. God wants you to be free. I don't fear debt. I'm going to get out of debt. So, and, I, and, I, and I pray everybody else, you know, feels the same way. We can help each other and help other people in need and teach them about how we got out of debt. Learn how to break free from the weight of out-of-control debt. Pick up the phone with confidence and call right now for Dr. Godot's latest groundbreaking series. It's just like a bondage to something, to the things of this world, and God wants to set us free from everything. There is hope. I'm ordering this series today. Thank you, Lord. It's a call you won't regret. Keys to living in the kingdom is such a tremendous and powerful teaching that you need to get these keys. It's going to make such a major difference in your life, your family, your health, your, your businesses, in every aspect of your life. Keys to living in the kingdom of God is a must. The Singles Conference is coming to Sacramento, positioned. I don't know, as a single woman, I know that eventually one day, I want to be married and have children. Learn how to position yourself for success as a single person. Position spiritually, emotionally, financially, in relationships, as a single parent, and positioned in the rules of dating. Tough, down-to-earth questions will be answered. It's gonna show you how to find your significant other, and how to build on a relationship. We as Christian singles need to be positioned, so Pastor Godot has a word for you. To hear the single was crying out when I know that 50% of my congregation is, is uh, single. When you go there, you know there's going to be a word for you, period. There's going to be a word just for you. This is a great place to be. This conference will help you to position yourself for life's challenges, opportunities, and rewards. Tell your single family members and friends not to miss the Singles Conference right here in the capital city. Thank you so much uh, for being a part of PGIM or a Father's Heart. You are making a huge, huge difference in your faithfulness, in your commitment to giving and being a partner with us. And we just release our faith and our agreement for you for any special need that you have in your life that God is going to meet that need over and above. In Jesus' name. This has been a Philip Godot Ministries broadcast.